Now, former secretary to the government of the Federation, Mabachir Lawal, joins us now for a discussion on the Adamawa governorship rerun and what to expect in the coming days. Mr. Lawal, thank you so much for joining us on Newsday. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time as well. Now, throughout the course of this election, we've seen many gestures, including what we saw in Adamawa State, that suggest to an extent that members or representatives of INEC have been compromised. How crucial is, is the next course of actions that INEC will take important in redeeming what might be left of its image? Well, I don't know whether INEC uh, still has an image to redeem no matter how small. Because uh, it beats imagination of any sensible, normal human being what INEC has done. They have completely surrendered to brigandage. They have lost conscience, sense of normal conscience. They have lost the sense of uh, normal decorum. They have... Uh, they have thrown uh, due process, law and order, out of the door. So I don't know what else is remaining for INET to, to do to redeem its image. I, I'm sorry to say this because I was one of those who, over the years, conversed the view that INEC should be trusted on account of my previous experiences and knowledge of the workings of INEC. But... Uh, in this election season, they have chosen to throw all caution to the wind. Whatever it is that is driving them, I do not know. But uh, it's something I know, an, an image they will leave for their children to, to pay because it's completely disgraceful. It's uh, as if uh, they have chosen to be enemies of the country they have chosen to throw the country into anarchy, or if possible, even civil war, by what they have done, by the cavalier manner in which they've gone about their duties to the citizens of the country. So that is my new opinion of INEC. Okay, so, I mean, we are aware, like, you know, the, the context of this case, the returning officer for the Adamawa governorship election, Meli Lamido, who is empowered by the law to declare the winner of the election, was absent when uh, Yunusa Ari announced Benani as the winner of the election. Uh, it's, been, it's been since suspended, and this returning officer summoned uh, to, the, you know, the HQ in Abuja. Now, what should be the next cause of action? Don't forget, we still have uh, people who are waiting to, you know, for, you know, for this uh, election cycle to be brought to a close? Uh, well, uh, my sister, this, uh, I always like to start at the root of the of problems. The brigandage they are playing, that's playing out in Adamawa is encouraged by what they did in the presidential election, which they magnified at the gubernatorial elections in all the states. And it's only normal that they, it's reaching a crescendo in Adamawa state. These are, these are people who, by hook or crook, by any means, uh, determined to rule. And of course, uh, when I say by hook or crook, more like by crook, given their antecedents and their backgrounds as known to the to known to Nigerians. So I'm not surprised that this has happened. I am, however, still hopeful that probably in INEC, probably, there are still some sane people, there are people that love this country, that uh, people still fear God. After all, in this, we are in the fasting season. I hope that those people will prevail eventually because uh, they said uh, one with God is majority. So we are appealing to those in INE who still have conscience, who still love Nigeria, to compel the others who choose to behave otherwise to do the needful thing for our country. After all, look at this, they are Nigerians, their children are Nigerians, their wives are Nigerians, their cousins are Nigerians, and it's in their interest, if not for their parents, in the interest of their children, to leave a legacy that uh, 
lives a peaceful country, a prosperous country, a country in which you are free to change a non-performing leader at will. So I'm still hopeful that uh, something will be done that will address this. God works in miraculous ways sometimes. It could just be that INEC has plunged itself will find a redemption in uh, Adamawa state. Whatever action um, we expect to see from INEC, you know, in the coming days, if in fact Aisha Binani is declared the governor of Adamawa state, that cr those two crucial elements, first, when she had that statement, acceptance speech, or, you know, ready, and the fact that INEC awarded that contract, you know, for the printing of sensitive materials to a company that's linked to her, those are still aspects that can't be ignored. So I'm just wondering what you think, you know, that will, how you think that will influence her, the legitimacy of her win if she emerges governor? My sister, God forbid, it's impossible that Bidani become governor of Adamawa State. I've been sure she was not qualified, she didn't have the character, and she didn't get the votes. Maybe it's important I take you through the stages of what had happened. During the first election, initially at the gubernatorial election, take note that I'm not PDP or APC. But the PDP got 421,525. And the APC got 380,275. That's PDP was leading with over 31,000 votes as at that stage. Now, after the coalition of 20, 20 local governments out of 21 in Adamawa, remaining one local government, Fufore. And that was where the problem started. They started doctoring the result. They stole the result after the coalition of the result at the, poly, at the local government coalition center. They, they stole the results and uh, started manipulating it. Now, we have circulating in Adama a voice note in which the REC was coercing the local, for a local government returning officer to make sure he delivers APC. The voice note is in circulation. At that stage, and uh, the people pers I mean, persuaded them to make sure the results were recompiled. It was recompiled and taken to the collection, state collection center, where he frustrated the process of collection. One local government remaining. And in that local government, there were just maybe 24,000 or so uh, uh, total registered voters. But well, uh, since the rake was determined as based on him, his instruction from above to return her, he contrived an inconclusive. He contrived it. There was no need for the inconclusive. But well, he took off, ran out to Abuja, and probably the masters, who is so-called the people from above who instructed him, decided that there would be a rerun in so many polling, 69 total. We were shocked at this because the INEC rule, I think is the Electoral Act, states that where there's an overvoting, the whole of the results in that polling unit starts cancelled. Everybody loses, and there's no talk of re-election at that polling unit. But we found out that they decided that there were so many of our voting, and the contrary to the Electoral Act, there should be a rerun in those polling units. Well, Adamawa being peaceful people didn't mind, and I suspect that the PDP, knowing that those results those polyunis were in their strongholds in any case. There's nothing to worry about. There was nothing to worry about. So the elections were rescheduled in about 69 polyunis across 20 local governments. The results, the election was peaceful, like everybody said it was peacefully conducted. Results were collected, collected at the local governments and were brought to the state collection center where there were already 10 local governments had been collected. You know, Adamawa is a very large, uh, geographically expansive state with uh, mountainous terrains in some areas. So it usually takes more than 24 hours for results from the outlying local governments to arrive. So while they waited at the collection center for some time, and these guys didn't come from the t remaining 10 local governments, they decided to postpone the a collation until 11 a.m. the following day. 
Now, as at that time, the 10 that were already collected, the PDP had increased their margin of victory. You know? But I think 2,000 and something in the 10 local governments collected after the run. Now, the remaining 10 local governments are in areas where PDP had overwhelmingly won in any case, except probably one. So PDP was confident that those results, where they come, they will increase the margin of victory further. My, our friend, the Red, comes 9 o'clock and starts uh, saying that on account of his own tallying on a sheet of paper he had in his hand, APC had won the election and he proceeded to announce. Where did he get his own result? Nobody knows. As at that time, only about 60 results also had been uploaded to the IRF. And he, he wasn't the returning officer. Uh, how did he get his result? Nobody knew. Why was he not on uh, results? Was not collected on the official uh, state collection form? Nobody knows how he got. So uh, people protested, but he went ahead and uh, announced. Now, this type of human beings, we ordinary human beings do not understand their psyche. It's impossible to understand how such people operate. But there are, they exist, and they can do things like this. So uh, we are still, as, we, as, as the INEC uh, National Office has said, they've suspended the further collection, but there are still 10 local governments out there. And of course, these results are already uploaded on the IRF. All the agents, polyunit agents, have their own original copies. And once these results come in, they can only increase the margin of victory of PDP. Uh, Binani can go do whatever she likes if she has a send mind and send head. She can announce as a president for all we care. After all, PDP at the national level has done that. So, but there's no way, there's absolutely no way she can claim victory in this election. It is so glaring, it's so open, it's so well known. It's a group of people that are determined by hook or crook, whether we like it or not, they must rule over us. What is driving them to this desperation? We don't know, except probably they want to lay their hands on our posts of our common patronage, patrimony. Maybe that's the only thing I can understand, that people that can drive people to this type of uh, desperation into which uh, everybody that you want to rule is against you. Everybody is against you. Mm. So we'll see how she will be a governor of Adama State with this election. All I urge her to do is wait for 2017. She's still young. She's quite young. Uh, she will still have another chance. But the way she's going about it, even that 2017, I don't know people will not accept her because of the way she's behaving. Thank you, And Mr. her people, of course. She's not alone. Yes, thank you, Mr. Lawal. I mean, I think you mean uh, 2027. Uh, 20, uh, well, thank you for being here, and uh, we'll continue to monitor what's going on in Adamawa. <laughs>